हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज प्रतीक भसीन बैक विद अ न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास ट्वेल्थ टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट चैप्टर एट दैट इज कंट्रोलिंग दिस इज द फिफ्थ फंक्शन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट बट नॉट द लास्ट फंक्शन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट सो नाउ वॉट इज कंट्रोलिंग सो कंट्रोलिंग मीन्स दैट एक्टिविटीज इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर परफॉर्म अकॉर्डिंग टू दी प्लान एंड इफ दे आर नॉट देन we have to find out deviation and take corrective actions so while controlling we follow a specific path so let's discuss the steps of the controlling process so according to the steps of controlling process the first step is setting performance standards then we have measurement of actual performance then we compare the actual performance with the standards that have been set already then we analyze the deviations and then we take corrective action so now let's discuss this process in detail so we have setting performance standards while we are planning for the organization we tend to set some standards which will serve as a controlling technique in the chapter of controlling so suppose every laborer is expected to produce at least 300 units per day so this is setting standards then we have measurement of actual performance so actual performance is measured using controlling techniques like personal observation ratio analysis and sample checking example we are personally observing that every laborer is producing around 280 units then we move on to the next step which is comparison of actual performance with the standard set under this step we compare the performance according to the standards that have been set so the performance might be more than the standards or less than the standards so the difference is known as deviation the next step is analyzing deviation so we find the extent of deviation and what are the causes of these deviations deviations can be observed by using critical path control and management by exception critical path control says that the focus should be on deviations which are in important areas so for a manufacturing organization a deviation in the production department will be more than a deviation in the human resource department similarly management by exception says that minor deviations should be ignored and only major deviation should be focused upon then we have the next step which is taking corrective action so standards are set to measure the actual performance and hence the comparison is made so that the performance is as per the standard set but if it isn't then we have to take corrective action so under this the minor deviations are ignored and steps are taken to correct the major deviations for example under production department production can be increased by training of employees adding more workers and increasing the number of working hours of the workers let's discuss about critical path control so key result areas are those areas which result in the success of the organization for a car company the main success factor for it is the engine of the car if anything goes wrong in the engine of the car the whole company will suffer so the company should not compromise on the engine component then we have management by exception so managers say that an attempt to control everything results in controlling nothing so we should try to ignore minor deviation and always focus upon major deviations now what are the advantages of key result areas and management by exception so it actually saves the time and efforts of manager as they deal with only major deviations then it identifies the critical problems which keep the organization on the right track then it also promotes delegation of authority and increases morale of the employees so let's discuss about limitations of controlling so the first limitation is difficulty in setting quantitative standards so 
certain standards like customer satisfaction, product quality are very difficult to measure in quantitative terms. Hence, the management should take steps to set standards in terms of quantities. Then we have employees resistance. Inefficient employees sometimes avoid being judged by a supervisor on terms of these standards because they feel like that they might be underperforming and hence can be removed from the organization. Then the next limitation is costly. Controlling is a costly process as it involves a lot of expenditure, time and efforts. So devices like CCTVs or softwares require a huge investment on the part of the company. Then we have little control on external factors. Some factors like government policies, technological changes or increase in competition can also impact the organization. So, the organization cannot control these external factors. Then let us move ahead and discuss about the relationship between planning and controlling. Planning and controlling are the two sides of the same coin. These are interdependent on each other. Planning means that it is deciding in advance what to do and how to do it. Controlling measures the performance of the organization according to the standard set and analyzes the deviation and then takes the corrective action. So, planning without controlling is meaningless and controlling is blind without planning. This line is justified because without planning there is no basis of controlling if these standards are not set in advance. But with planning, the actual performance can be measured according to the standards set and effective steps can be taken to achieve those standards. Then we have planning is a thinking process and controlling is evaluative. Planning explains the path to achieve the objectives, whereas controlling evaluates whether those objectives have been achieved or not. Then we have planning and controlling are both forward looking and backward looking functions. So, plans are prepared for the future hence it is called a forward looking function. Whereas, planning gets feedback and becomes better day by day for the future hence it is a backward looking function. Then we have controlling. Controlling examines the past activities to find out the deviations from the standards hence it is a backward looking function and controlling suggests that corrective measures should be taken through modification of future plans, hence it is a forward looking function. So, planning and controlling both are backward and forward looking functions. Now, let us move ahead and discuss about benefits of controlling. So, the first benefit of controlling is it facilitates coordination in action. So, each department and employee perform a particular task like sales purchase and production, they have been assigned different tasks to perform. So, controlling serves as a coordination technique between all these departments. Then it helps in accomplishing the organizational goals. As controlling measures the progress towards the organizational goals and brings out the deviations if any and hence helps us to take corrective action. This leads to achievement of organizational goals effectively and efficiently. Then we have judging accuracy of standards. Work is performed according to the predetermined objectives being set while planning. So, if there is any deviation, immediate action is to be taken so that they do not occur again. And we also tend to judge the accuracy of standards whether those standards were set according to the performance objectives or not. Then moving ahead, it also serves as a motivational technique to the employees. If employees are informed in advance that on what basis will they be judged, they will be determined and motivated to perform better. Then the next benefit is it ensures order and discipline throughout the organization. So all employees are given targets and their work is fixed. This maintains discipline and order throughout the organization because they know that what is to be done and when it is to be done. So, this ensures that the order and discipline is maintained throughout the organization.
Now let's discuss some techniques of managerial control. The various techniques of managerial control may be classified into two broad categories that is traditional techniques and modern techniques. Traditional techniques are those which have been used by companies for a long period of time. However, these techniques have not become obsolete and are still being used. On the other hand, modern techniques are those techniques which have come to use recently and their use has actually been increasing day by day. So these techniques provide a refreshingly new thinking on the ways in which various aspects of an organization can be controlled. Now let's discuss the various types of traditional techniques. So the first type of traditional technique is personal observation. So this is the most traditional technique being used for controlling. Under this method, the supervisor personally observes the performance of every worker throughout the organization and judges them on the basis of the standard set. He also advises them to take corrective action and also provides feedback to the management as well as the workers. Then the second type of traditional technique is statistical reports. So statistical analysis includes the reports on averages, percentages, ratios, correlation, etc. These are very useful for managers when such information is presented in the form of charts, table, pie diagrams, it becomes very easy for them to make conclusions out of it. Then the next technique is break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is a point where there is no profit and no loss. It is actually a point where total revenue is equal to total cost. So the formula for break-even analysis is fixed cost upon sales value minus variable cost per unit. So this calculates the break-even level of the organization. Then we have the next technique which is budgetary control. Under this technique of managerial control, all operations which are planned in advance in the form of budgets and actual results are compared with the budgetary standards. This comparison reveals the necessary actions that are to be taken so that organizational objectives are achieved. Now let's discuss modern techniques. The modern technique, the first modern technique is return on investment. So it is a useful technique which provides the basic yardstick for measuring whether or not invested capital has been used efficiently for generating a reasonable amount of return. So return on investment can be useful for calculating the performance of an organization according to individual departments or the organization as a whole. The formula for calculating return on investment is net income upon sales or sales upon total investment. Then we have ratio analysis. So ratio analysis refers to the analysis of financial statement through computation of various ratios. The most commonly used ratios are liquidity ratios. So liquidity ratios are calculated to determine the short term solvency of the business. Then we have solvency ratios. These ratios are calculated to determine the long term solvency of the organization. Then we have profitability ratios. So these ratios are calculated to analyze the profitability position of an organization. Such ratios involve analysis of profits in relation to sales or funds or capital employed. Then we have turnover ratios. Turnover ratios are calculated to determine the efficiency of operations based on effective utilization of resources. Higher turnover means better utilization of employed resources. Then we have responsibility accounting. So it is a system of accounting where different sections, divisions and departments of an organization are set up as responsibility centers. The head of the center is responsible for achieving the target set for his center. So the various type of responsibility centers are cost center. So a cost or expense center is a segment of an organization in which managers are held responsible for the cost incurred in the center, but not for the revenue. For example, in a manufacturing organization, 
production department is actually a cost center because it is only incurring expenses but it is not generating revenue for the organization. Then we have revenue centers. A revenue center is the segment of an organization whose primary responsibility is to generate revenue for the organization. For example, the marketing department of an organization may be classified as a revenue center. Then we have profit center. So, a profit center is a segment of an organization which has its own revenue and its own costs. So, it is actually responsible for the profits earned by it. Then we have investment center. So, an investment center is responsible not only for profits but also for investments made in the center in the form of assets. The investment made in each center is separately ascertained and return on investment is used as a basis for judging the performance of the center. Then we have another technique which is known as management audit. So, it refers to the systematic appraisal of the overall performance of the management of the organization. So, the purpose is to review the efficiency and effectiveness of the management and to improve its performance in future periods. Thus, management audit may be defined as evaluation of the functioning, performance and effectiveness of the management of an organization. Then we have PERT and CPM. So, PERT and CPM refers to program evaluation and review technique and critical path method. These are important network techniques which are especially useful for planning, scheduling and implementing time bound projects. So, it involves performance of a variety of complex, diverse and interrelated activities. These techniques deal with time scheduling and resource allocation and it aims at effective execution of projects. Then we have management information system. So, management information system is a computer based information system that provides information and support for effective managerial decision making. It is a type of decision support system for managers which provides solutions for the most common problems being faced by the managers. So, at this point we end the chapter of controlling. In this chapter we actually discussed that how does an organization review its activities and checks whether the activities were in accordance with the plans. So, we started about the steps of controlling, we also started about the benefits and limitations of controlling. Then we discussed about the relationship between planning and controlling. Then we also discussed about the techniques of controlling which were classified into traditional and modern techniques. I hope you were through with this chapter, I will see you in the next class till then. Please take care of yourselves.